Good morning, everybody. everybody. Hoping everyone's having a wonderful and beautiful day so far. Bo Hashem. Um, I want to give a big, big Yisher Koach and a shout out to someone that I uh, it really, I, got, I was very moved, very, very moved by them. Um, a few days ago in Shir, we spoke about how the Rebbe said that if we were able to just pick up a bunch of the breadcrumbs of, uh, you know, some crumbs of time here, here, that go to waste. Just a bunch of little sockets of, pockets of time that we could probably, it would accumulate to something, to like a, a nice unit of time, and we would realize how much more time we have for stuff that is meaningful and important. And the Rebbe said, you know, you pull five minutes from there, 10 minutes from there, 50 minutes from here, you suddenly, you get a whole other hour in the day. And we spoke about Ibn Nassim Breslover's Indian of Shmira Sazman, how he's so big on, on guarding time and making sure that he understood, uh, you know, that, that time is so precious. And the more that you guard it, the more that it grows and, and you have more time. So I asked everyone, it would be finished here at about 10 to 10. And I asked everyone, I said, listen, let, let's do a Nisayon. Let's check in in about two hours and see how much time we were able, we were able to grab just for the next two hours. How many crumbs could we collect to make, you know, to add more to our day and to make it bigger. And 
at 12, I got a WhatsApp. I got a WhatsApp from my dear friend, Mata Esther, the one and only, uh, Mata Esther Brownstein. And she checked in with me and we discussed her concept of, you know, she realized how much time she had accumulated. And it was so mechazek, it was so strengthening for me. I think I'm sharing this because personally, like when I, when I, when I say like, Let's let's try this, and then people may think, "Oh, he's just trying to give like a good etza." No, I, for me, I, I want to see how the learning that we're doing, you know, the ma'ase tachlis, where it goes. So when you when when someone comes, you know, when someone checks back in with that, it's very special, and it's very um, not reassuring, but it it just makes everything feel like it's worth it. Well, in today's lesson that we're going to be learning right now from the in the Piyasetz Nerebbe HaKadosh Kodashim, every time, every time we open this Sefer, it's especially now, these last few uh, moments in the Sefer, it's very humbling. It's ve- we're very, very, very lucky, very lucky, very privileged that it, in the world, it may be July 1st, 2020, in our hearts, it's, what is it, Tet Tamuz Tav Shin Pei, and it's, it's another day of filling our lives with meaning, with elokus, with godliness, and with growth. So I also want to give a big akar satov takadosh baruch for our dear friend Dov Yeshua Kram's uh, Rufua. and Dov had a a, a crazy car accident um, earlier this week, and Baruch Hashem, he's good and he's with us learning right now. He's putting the final touches on something right now, but uh, I just want to give thanks to Hashem. That Baruch Hashem, uh, Dov is feeling good and is with us, and B'Simcha. Okay, so if you open up your Sefer, I believe that we are on either Shin Pei or Shin Pei Aleph. You'll see it in a second. Um, it's Ot Mem, whichever one it is, Ot Mem. But you have it in front of you as well. This Torah is one of the most powerful pieces of advice regarding being self uh, self-disciplinary. Having self-discipline is something that each of us would love to master. If we had this, we know, like, we wouldn't need all these external things. Something that's going on inside with us internally would be able to direct us in a good place. Self-discipline. Alavai, ah, but well, we wouldn't do for it. We would do anything in the world for it. I'm personally, you know, most impressed not impressed, but moved, I would say, and inspired, very much inspired, when I meet people in my life that you see that they, they have their own mahalach, they, they have their own way of working on things, and they're so disciplined, and they follow through. Yesterday, I spent the whole day in the studio with a very sweet Rav, friend of mine, who, he's one of the most self-disciplined people I ever met. And, um, that's a mida. That's a mida that we're going to see today. How the Piyaset Tzedakah is going to uh, help us get there. So let's go right into it. Ot mem. It it kind of is kashur to the previous ot we we we, we learned before um, in Lamitet. Very very uh, that that very beautiful piece about being conscious of our time and gathering up all the lost times. This is very interesting and very important. The greatest, the most, the most advisable and the most, maybe he's saying the most underrated, but the most practical, the most practical thing that you have to work with in your life in order to what he says, to frighten your yetzer, meaning to put yourself in check, the greatest thing in the world is your own shevet musarcha, your own whip of musar that you have inside of you. And the charata, the regret, the regret that, that 
word we hate using in the modern world, but it's such a, it's such a powerful, it's such a potent word, charata. We always want, want to feel like we don't regret anything. It made us who we are. And we always say, charata is one of the key components of tshuva, as the Rambam explains to us in Hilchas Tshuva. To regret, yeah, Baruch Hashem, I could regret things. What a gift. What a gift that I don't have to be shalem with every single thing I did. I could actually regret things. Not only can I, I need to. Charata, musar, the ethics. Musar aklayot. That's the, what, what Chazal explained that Avram Avinu had. He called kidney ethics, right? The musar klayos. Inside, inside I have my biggest teacher. That after I do something wrong, I have this charata, I have this musar. Shemeanim et libo shel adam. They torture your heart after you've fallen. The Rebbe says, Dayam la'atzmam. That's enough. You don't need anything. If you were really in touch with your musar klayos, if you were really in touch, with inside, inside, what's going on with you? And how much your inside becomes unaligned after you fall and you were able to be vulnerable enough to sense the pain that your kishkas, that your panemius is going through? The Rebbe says, Dayam la'atzman. That'd be enough. That's all you need in this world in order to, to wake up. Le'ayem alav, to threaten the yetzer, and to distance yourself from the kiur. Kiur comes, you know, mecho'ar, ugliness. To distance yourself from that ugly, dark, the place you don't want to be in. You know, that, this is a key principle in Hasidus. It's not about how bad I feel, how bad I make myself feel. It's about how bad I allow myself, meaning how much I allow myself to be in tune and in touch with what's happening inside anyway. And if I'm in tune and in touch with what's happening inside anyway, and I listen to my panemius, how, how wrong I feel after I've, let's say, it's talked evil, or if I did another Avera, if I allow myself to feel how unaligned I feel, that would be, the Rebbe says, that would be enough for a person. He wouldn't need any external source of Musar. He wouldn't have to go to someone else to put him out on the, you know, and say, call him out and say, you did this wrong, you should feel bad about this. That would be enough. Aval da'aka. But what? But, the, but there's another level here. And this is a very important level. Aval da'aka. Shegam bisha'at charatato lo harag le'itzro. But the problem is, is how does a person know if I really, really regret something? How do I know if I really have charata or not? So the Rebbe says that even while you're in this place of regret, lo harag yitzro, you didn't really shech your yitzro haram. Not only that, ubeseiter libo, in the depth of your heart, kvar mitkonen hu lashuv u lefagel. You're already, you're already kind of planning the next fall. In, in, the, in the deepest depths of your heart, there's a place in you that's already like, okay, I'm supposed to feel bad, so I'm doing the charata thing. But inside, deep, deep down inside, what am I doing? I'm already kind of constructing a way as to how I'm going to be able to do this again. And I already, and usually, you know what, you know what happens? The process that we go through is, listen, I know Hashem doesn't want His child to feel so bad about Himself so therefore, I'm basically going to kind of ease my way into whatever I'm doing. And yes, I'll have charata, but you know, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world what I did, which may be true, but it prevents you from threatening your Yetzirah. It prevents you from shocking your Yetzirah so much to the state that you'll never do this again. You know, if you've ever... If you've ever spoken Lashon Hara about someone and then you realize that they're standing right behind you, if that ever happened to you? Where you say something really not nice about somebody and then you, unbeknownst to you, they're stand, they, they hear every word you're saying and you look and you see the immediate consequence of your Avera and you see that person's face. If you've ever experienced such a thing like that, that's a moment where, where the Harata is probably like the strongest because you see immediately you see immediately what happened to you, what you did to yourself. But the Rebbe is saying over here, quite often when we, 
when we do an Avera, yes, I, I have charata, but I didn't, I didn't open myself enough to the extent that it really shocks my system. And ma'asav kol kach ra'im, it's not, so it's not the end of the world. Ve'en libo kol kach davea lehem, at shekimat yitzel lasum sakin belo omer of ka'aso v'tsa'aro al atzmo, u'mipachdo yifchad u'mitsa'aro yira, yishmor ve'yivrach. And what ends up happening is that you really, your, your kas is, your kas on yourself doesn't really force you to want to wake up. You kind of stop it at a certain point under the false notion that what you're doing now with charata will lead you to want to kill yourself, chas v'shohem, God forbid. So it's a big limud, it's a big, you know, you need to dive in so strong over, over knowing ribona shleilam, like, how do I know? How do I know how to allow myself to listen to how I become so, you know, unaligned when I do an Avera? But at the same point, I don't want to take it to the place, to the extreme, that'll make me feel like I'm worthless. But there's got to be a, a middle ground. There's got to be a place in the middle that, where, there's, where there's harmony and where there's a space where I could listen to my inner Musa to the extent that it shocks my system. And it doesn't allow me to to chas v'shonam, repeat what I've what I've sunk into. Now here the Rebbe, this is like a a really beautiful chiddush. This is a very and it's it's a chiddush you have to pay attention to just one word here to see a certain statement of Chazal that I I think generally gets looked over. We we jump over it, but we don't realize it's such a great chiddush. It's so uh, it's so beautiful. Um, so look at this. This is like um, it's a beautiful thing. It is over this that you know when Chazal told us when a person wants to get his act together, he should remind himself his day of death. They didn't say to him a person should be reminded of their death. It says Yom Hamita. It says the day of death. There's a world of a difference over here. What's the difference between world of death, rem- rem- you know, rem- reminding yourself of the day you're going to die, as opposed to mita, the day you'll die. And we, we should all live long, healthy, and happy years. We should greet Mashiach to Canaan, obviously. But why Chazal tell us, remember the day of death. So the Rebbe says, second line in the second paragraph, ki az, beyom ha'acharon she'itzro pasak, what, what happens in the last day of a person's life? The person knows, I'm checking out in 10 hours, right? So he's not going to say, uh, wow, I got to, you know, let me see how many lusts I could still fulfill, right? And the last day of a person's life is Yetzer, that which usually drives him and, and, and is unfortunately the driver's seat during his life. That's not what's leading the show over here. It, he knows he's about to meet his creator in about 10 hours, right? Let's just say this is what it means, right? He knows it's going to happen. So you're in this day of death. It's the day that it's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. So what happens and during those last few hours, end of the second line, Ayumat hazuama nigleta lefanav bechol giula. In its utter coarseness, the, pollu- the, the, the world of pollution that awaits a person like this is revealed to him. Goal nefesh. He becomes so sick when he sees the accumulation of all the time that went for nothing and all the moments that he didn't utilize and all the opportunities he had or she had <clears throat> to learn from the fallings. He looks at this whole life. You got 10 hours to live, right? You look at your whole life as one keyom katsar. As one short day, shemale al kol gdotav bishkatsim uremasim hevel nevela. Suddenly, a person looks back at their whole life, and they see, "Oh my God, oh, I ignored so many moments that were so indicated to me. I could have been so helpful, but I ignored them so much." 
that I look back at my life, it's like one long day of, like he says over here, shkatsim or emasim, hevel, vanity, unavela. Udvarim atovim, it's not, okay, but I had some good moments. Udvarim atovim, shenim tzayim bo, zeir sham, zeir sham. Yeah, I had some good moments here and there. But you know what? Kimat enam nikarim. They're barely noticed. They're barely recognized. You can't even recognize them. Why? Legodem meutam ubedidatam. In light of everything else that a person had to juggle with, those good moments where a person listened to his inside and he was vulnerable enough to uh, allow the pain of falling play a role in his life, those moments are so minute and they get washed away in light, in light of the bigger picture. So the Rebbe says, go to the, that's what Chazal mean when they say, go to Yom Hamita. Go and envision the day of death, when really, this is what it's going to look like when you look back at your life. Wow, how painful. How much sorrow will you be filled with when that's what you're looking at? Lama Asa. Next page. Lama Asa Kacha Lelo Mo'il Ulelo Tachlit. Why did I do this? Why did I act like this to no avail, to no purpose? Lama shimeshet yemei chayav laredet al yedehem el imkei azuhama v'tipol ata el nikvei detehom araba ben chamarei atone v'chalbe. Wow, this is, a, <laughs> this is pretty intense. I'm just going to read one more line. Shekvar omdim saviv lemitato umechakim al nafsho. The Rebbe says, when, you, when you're at your Yom Hamita, your day of death, and you have these 10 hours, or, or whatever it is, whatever amount of time that it is, you stop and you say to yourself, Why? Hashem gave me this gift called life, to be alive, to do some really beautiful things here. Why did I use the day of my life in order to descend down into the valleys of pollution? I have poisonous. And now, because of that, the consequences of a life like that is that I'm about to meet my creator and I'm, you have to envision you're about to be placed in, in a place we don't, don't want to know of so much. So, but like our bed will be surrounded by all these, these, these animals these, that are simply are destructive and chamorei atone vekalbe, donkeys and and, and wild dogs that are already standing around my bed and waiting for my nefesh, meaning waiting to harm me, waiting to just, I don't want to go there right now, right? Fourth line, tachat, instead, what could have I done? Shaya yachol la'alot al yedehem el Hashem el mador ha'atzilot. I could have, I could have used my days in order to let tapes, to climb high into this realm of atzilus. And my soul will fly up into the into the lap and bosom of my father of my parent with such sweetness and refined holiness. So in today's era, in today's day and age, if you want to get a little bit of a shock to your system, just imagine that when you're about to die, right, the Yoamita. You get a vision somehow of all the minutes accumulated that were wasted on apps on our phones or Netflix or those things that you, it's not necessarily evil, but it's just for nothing. It it didn't, when you're done with it, it's not like it brought you anywhere. So many people always say, oh, no, 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 it's good for me. I need to watch things every day. I need to watch because that, 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 that's good for me for the bigger picture. It calms my, my mind down. Does anyone ever feel like after they watch something that they took a nap? Usually you have to take a nap after you watch something because you exhausted kochos and you're, you're tired now. You're tired. So imagine, I know it's a little bit kharif. It's okay, we can handle it. So I, imagine basically what he's saying over, you know, what the Rebbe is saying over here is, go for a second to that day, Yoham Misa. And you know that you have a few hours left 
and they're gonna you're gonna look back at all the time that you used that instead of flying soaring high getting closer and closer to god and making this world more beautiful these are days that you would never say here look at my days look what i did with this now what is the rebbe doing for us he's not telling us right now that we're going to die chas v'shalom. but he's saying this is an amazing tactic this is an amazing um, exercise. What the Rebbe is saying over here, imagine that you didn't have the chance to utilize your days. Imagine you didn't have the opportunity to, to, to change that reality that's in front of you. Well, Baruch Haba, welcome to today. Be'ezer Hashem, you're not going to die in 10 hours. What are you doing with today? So even though this seems like a very harif, scary, spicy type of, of piece of Torah, this is actually the most wonderful, beautiful, and helpful piece of advice. What you wouldn't do when you had 10 hours left to live in order to clean up the schmutz from the days before you, well, the Rebbe says, here, I'm giving you this gift right now. Because on the, on the day of your death at Yom Amitah, look how he continues here, fifth line, et libo yikra et nafsho yitrof pechapo mirov tsaro uchevo. Wow. You'll rip out your heart from your midst because from, you feel so bad that you wasted so much time and that you didn't take the gift of days of being alive. And, and instead, what did you do? Hashem Yirachem, the Rebbe says, Ve'az amitit. That is when a person enters into the world of real, real charata, of real regret. So the Rebbe wants us to have real regret now. Remember, at the beginning of the piece, he was saying that a person is under the assumption at times that he's, he's experiencing real regret. But if you had real regret and you allowed yourself to really regret what you did, you'd be able inside to listen to what's going on. That would prevent you from ever falling in this again in whatever it is you're regretting. The Rebbe told us in the beginning of the piece, ah, but you know, when we do charata, we kind of leave this kind, of, this open space that doesn't fully take us there to the place of I'm never doing this again. We already plan how maybe we'll do this over here, but we'll we'll do it again a little bit less befarhesia. We'll do it in the, uh, less less loud, maybe quieter. But what we really want is to have real charata. We want today. What's today? Today is Wednesday. Ted Tamos, right? We want today to be filled with a day that I would be proud of when I come up to Shemaim and I have to give a din v'cheshbon of my days. We want to be proud of it. We don't want to... We, want to we, we, we do not want to be masters of explaining our excuses as to why our day wasn't refined. Third line from the bottom, Zot Yaskilo Yom Hamita. This is why it says the day of death. And not death itself. Because it's these torturous hours where you have you realize I don't have I don't have the ability to go back in time. Well, the Rebbe is saying over here, with this visualization, you can kind of if you're like Marty McFly, you can like go forward and you can go backwards. You can go forward to visualizing what that's gonna be like, the day of your death. But now you can you can immediately come back into the into into right now and be like, whoa, that was scary. I want to make sure I don't get stuck in that kind of situation. It's like the Rebbe is saying to us, any nida you want to work on, kas, kina, gaiva, it hurts when you're exposed to how detrimental and harmful it is to your neshama. No doubt. It's very heavy. And it hurts. But wouldn't you want it to hurt you and not be under the assumption that you have that one taken care of? You would. So here's the gift. Jump to the future. Experience your day of death when it's too late to fix anything. And now come back. And come to right now and be like, Today is going to be, today is amazing. Today is going to be even more amazing. The third line from the bottom. 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 The
Charata zo me'ata tefachem. That charata that you may experience the day of your death, the Rebbe is saying, go for it now. It's available to you right now. Go acknowledge that, that fear and that tzar and that pain that you cause yourself when you feel like you wasted your life. Umitzaro ze me'ata yivrach ve'yitrachek. This is amazing. And, from, and that pain will cause you right now to run away and distance yourself from a life which will lead you to feeling embarrassed of your days. Listen, a person always, should always feel this, this, this place of busha. Not busha, like I'm so embarrassed by what I did, but busha, achna'a, achna'a. But when it comes to bring a din v'cheshbon, ad me'a ve'eshim shana, the Rebbe is saying, wouldn't you take any etza in the world? Wouldn't you receive any piece of advice which would enable you to be more proud of your days as opposed to trying to hide them behind your back? Meaning the, the hidden mysteries what do we say in Amir al-Korach? Shabbatenu kabel ushmat ta'akatenu yodea ta'alumot. Only you, Hashem, know the mysteries. Only you know the hidden things. So I am going to, I'm going to use the Rebbe's words today. And I'm going to say to myself right now, Ribbono Shalom, I am going to do whatever I can today to be more in tune with my Musar Klayot, with my, what do we call it? Kishka ethics. Ethical kishkas, meaning inside, deep, deep down inside, every person knows what's right and what's wrong. Every person knows what's right and what's wrong. A real Rebbe is not someone that tells you what's right or what's wrong. A real Rebbe is a person that takes you and connects you to the place inside of you that knows how to do Havdalah, that knows how to separate. That's a real Rebbe. We have a lot of Eitzah givers today, right? But a real Rebbe is someone who's able to mekasher your Shoresh Neshama to the place in... First of all, a real Rebbe believes that you know inside what's the difference between Kodesh and Chom and connects you there. Problem is that we have a lot of leaders, so-called leaders and teachers, that don't really believe that the flock has the... that the individual has the ability to taste charata, to have musar klayos, to know deep down inside what's going on. So Hashem should send us righteous leaders, real leaders, shlach lanu manhig amiti, that loves us and believes in us and connects us to the nekuda inside that knows the difference between right and wrong and that's willing to even not just say it here, I'm going to introduce you to yourself, but I'm also going to be here. That the Rebbe that we have, the teachers we have are going to say, I'm also going to be here right next to you while you're getting to know yourself, because it may be a little scary in the beginning. But I'm here with you, and I'm not letting go of your hand. Yom Nifla, wonderful day, meaningful day. Mashiach now.